Hi, everybody. Welcome, 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 guys. Give me a minute while I fix everything in the studio. Shout out to everybody in the chat, you guys. Thank you guys for being here. Um, we have some uh, pretty sad news um, as it pertains to Riley. You know, he his body was recovered. Um, we're hearing that uh, it's been confirmed that it's him. Uh, yeah. Let me just make sure I got everybody in here. I didn't even send anything out. Shout out to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for being here. Give me one sec, you guys. As I'm pulling, I mean, it's, it's Twitter is blowing up right now. You know, we definitely didn't want to, uh, you know, allowing the family to break the news is important. Absolutely. But let me show you guys what I'm talking about. Hold up, y'all. Uh, Brian Enton, the body of Riley was discovered from the Cumberland River in West Nashville this morning, approximately eight miles from downtown. No foul play, play related trauma was observed. An autopsy is pending. OK, I know. Um, yeah, sending, sending so much love and prayers to the family. We don't know um, the information, right? So kind of keep that in mind, the details, uh, all of that. We really don't know. But this is what we have as far as breaking news. Um, I know people are, you know, live right now and talking about it. I definitely, there's been a couple of bodies that had been mentioned before. This is why I was waiting for more confirmation. But um, I saw Mr. Enton talking about it. So I figured, you know, this is this this would be confirmation at this point, right? Um, hold up, let me see if I can get us to the news streams currently. Um, it's just really sad to even hear some of this is going on. Okay, uh, I know that they have rescue, uh, you know, search and recovery out there um, as well. We have the New York Post that has posted uh, an article. Check Facebook. I definitely will. Thank you. Let me go on Facebook as well. I'm pulling up all the tabs, y'all. Give me one second. Hmm. Thank you, Vic. Shout out to everybody. Thank you. You said New Spice has a press conference. Okay. I am on it. I am on it. I am on it. Here we go. Here we go. Let me share with you guys what looks to be a press conference that we have going on right now. Um, I believe this is it right here. Other identifying factors that helped us identify who he is. I want to say uh, to the family, uh, my heart and prayers go out to you all uh, for this very unfortunate and tragic uh, incident. I also want to say thank you to the Nashville community and the Outpoint community of the Outpoint support from the community uh, in trying to help us locate uh, Mr. Strain. I also want to say thank you to our USAR team and, and to the fire department and OEM and TWRA and everyone else, and including the media, for everything that you've done, for the countless tips that came in. Uh, we received nearly 200 tips as of yesterday that we were vetting out. Um, so at this time, the family's been notified. Uh, there would be an autopsy uh, more than likely sometime today, and uh, and we'll have a little bit further uh, from that point. So, thank you. Chief, can you tell us, is there any other additional evidence that, that points you to the theory that it seems like you've been going after for a while now? It's just that he fell into the river, you know, accidentally? Yeah, there's no other evidence that suggests anything other than uh, we have reports that uh, normally, uh, under these circumstances, with, with his height and weight, that he could have surfaced between 14 and 20 days. Uh, this is the 14th day, uh, so we were uh, really expecting uh, anytime soon to uh, to find him. In fact, our search teams was going to put in in the water here uh, this morning and did search from this point further down. Uh, so uh, we were in the right spot, which is unfortunate. But there's nothing to suggest anything other than any foul play at all. Is there any 
Did you get a piece of that were actually looking for him that found them? Yes, that's, uh, so those workers typically on the river, whether it's barge companies, concrete companies, other businesses that actually are on the river, and they uh, they look routinely. It's happened countless times before. And if they move, I believe, a barge, and don't quote me on that, they removed something from the river, and as they moved it, they noticed uh, Mr. Strain so, and, ca and called it in typically work on the water. They weren't necessarily searching. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Wow. Okay. From Chief Drake on the scene there at Ed Temple Boulevard. One the body sec. of Riley Strain, the college student who has been missing for two weeks now, was discovered this morning. And it sounds like the biggest takeaway is that they believe at this point he likely fell into the water. That's the operational theory at this point after pulling the body and not finding any signs of foul play. And workers around that area, near that area of the river, uh, routinely, what Chief Drake says, they typically uh, look for things like this, and they happen to find Riley just hours ago, around 7.30 wow. this morning. And what I found very interesting, Amanda, was they said that given his height and weight, typically this would have been the first day that they would have located someone of his stature. They had been anticipating that if he indeed fell into the water, this would have been the day or in the coming next days that they would have found him based on those factors. In fact, they were so confident in that they had already planned to have boats in the water today doing a search in that particular area. So they were aware that this was an important day and they were planning their search efforts all around that. Um, they said that they have contacted the family, which Gosh, you think about what an emotional phone call that had to have been. This is mm -hmm. a family that has been here since day one of his disappearance. Um, they're from out of town. They're not from here. They have no real support system. And they have been desperate to find their son. And they have said all along, we're not leaving without him. Exactly right. And Chief Drake also made note of the outpouring of love that they have been receiving from not just the Nashville community, but volunteers coming just nationwide to help try and find this young man and bring that closure to his family. So let's talk a little bit about that discovery. They say, you know, a lot of business is there on the river. It's part of their routine to check the riverbanks and clear the riverbanks of debris. Um, and in this particular case, they may have moved a barge and that's when they made the discovery of Riley Strain's body. Police say that he was still wearing the shirt that he was last seen in, he was still wearing the watch and that there were other identifying factors that allowed them to confirm that this indeed was the body of Riley Strain. Let me, let me, for those that are coming in late, he was still wearing the shirt and the watch okay so everybody was interviewing witnesses that were saying somebody else was wearing the shirt and the watch he was wearing the shirt and the watch keep that in mind right mm -hmm. i think it's important drain what comes next so an autopsy is the next piece of this, and authorities are saying that they believe that will happen at some point today. Um, and then the TABC, of course, is going to continue its investigation. Their big river here every day, and they were doing routine checks All right, one earlier sec, in the week. Metro Police had told us that they were. I want to go back to the conference. Who's working on the? One sec, one sec, because for those of us, some of us missed the conference, like myself. Uh, I, See if we can go to the beginning, the press conference. Is this, this must have been it. No, that was a minute ago. One sec. Yeah, this is it right here. All right. One sec. I don't know if this is the full one, but we'll watch some of this, okay? Is there no sound? Other than. Hold up. Yeah. Yeah, there's no other evidence that suggests anything other than uh, we have reports that uh, normally uh, under these circumstances with, with his height and weight that he could have surfaced between 14 and 20 days. Uh, this is the 14th day. Uh, so we were uh, really expecting uh, anytime soon to, uh, to find him. In fact, our search teams was going to put in in the water here uh, this morning and then search from this point further down. Uh, so uh, 
we were in the right spot. It's just unfortunate. But there's nothing to suggest anything other than any foul play at all. Yes, that's uh, so the workers typically on the river, whether it's barge companies, concrete companies, other businesses that actually are on the river, and they uh, they look routinely. It's, it's happened countless times before. And as they moved, I believe, a barge, and don't quote me on that, they removed something from the river, and as they moved it, they noticed uh, Mr. Strain so, and, ca and called it in. Typically work on the water. They weren't necessarily surf strains. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Oh, I'm muted. Sorry, y'all. Uh, shout out to everybody in the chat. I'm looking for the full press conference. I'm going to find that right now. Thank you for the 199. You said Riley, rest in peace. Um, Riley, comfort to his family. Thank you so much for this comment. Pika says, so this goes to show eyewitnesses that called into YouTube shows have been proven wrong time and time again. People need to stop listening to the clout chasers that insert themselves into cases. It's a tough one, yo. Like, we had to... <laughs> There was a lot of people, y'all, that, you know, there was a lot of witnesses. Y'all remember we were saying that. We're like, listen, I don't want to discount a witness um, statement. And I want to say that, you know, we just don't know what we don't know, right? Um, but they said it. They said that they found he was wearing the shirt and the watch and all this other stuff. So for the person that spotted the shirt, you have to kind of wonder. And she went on national international a channel a tv show you know so that is pretty uh scary that people can can make those assertions and this was huge i mean i'm just like like banfield said it i just like wow 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 i don't know you guys let me see if I can go up a little bit and see what your guys' comments are. Hold up. Um, it doesn't happen anywhere else, unfortunately. It would cause one thing to get attention and another. You know, you're right. Um, we need to bring a, the same level of energy and attention needs to be brought to other cases. I would agree with you on that, Kings. Melanie says, I still help wondering if this drink had been spiked. But even so, how come they simply threw him out of the pub without calling a taxi cab or something? That's a great question. He said I was be getting cussed out in another creator's live for saying the family confirmed the shirt was a rumor. People were going nuts about the shirt theory, you know, and then like. Did we how many witnesses did we count? There were several witnesses that came out like. I don't know, y'all. I don't know, man. I don't know. Is there a place we could send love and prayers to the family? You know, I don't I don't know Charlotte right now. Um, nothing. I know I was muted, y'all. Hopefully I'm not muted anymore. Uh, nothing has been confirmed. Hold on. Let me see uh, what y'all are saying. Not true. There's a lot of videos you all haven't seen yet. The cops said that. Never stop speaking up. What's not true, Sherry? Uh, you said not true. There's a lot of videos y'all haven't seen yet. The cops said that. Never stop speaking up. I'm confused by your comment. Um, let's see. Y'all, uh, uh, says, fuck all that. I'll discount a witness if it hasn't been confirmed by law enforcement, but that's just me. I understand that piece. Um, why I come to Rabbit News, we look for facts. You know, we don't want to attack anybody, but honestly, like, that's something that we got to think about. Samantha says, Rabbit, have you looked? I have not looked into sebastian rogers um quite yet that happened a week before this he's a 14 year 15 excuse me boy um missing under highly suspicious circumstances sometimes um there are some cases here and i feel like sebastian rogers madeline soto there are some cases here that i try to be very careful about how i cover them because um 
of the level of speculation. I'm noticing that it is safer sometimes to just pick, you know, and I hate to put it that way, but like there's just so much blogger infighting and then there's so much like misinformation that people go from one blog to the next and they spew it here. And I just hate having that back and forth with folks. Um, Layla says, I'm not saying it's completely makes the outcome any better, but I'm glad no foul play was done. Thank you, Layla. Nonsense says, I honestly wish they'd start charging people for false reports after this stuff. It's getting way too messy, these poor families. Whew. Yeah. Um, and then we also have, you said, Brendan Santo from MSU. Like, I thought for a past week, heartbreaking. There's also, oh, yes, you're right. You got 15 missing brown and black kids um, missing in Tennessee. Where's the attention to that? It's, it's, I don't know, y'all. Um, it's kind of like uh, Jelani Day when Kylie, uh, when when the whole Kylie Rodney case happened, Jelani Day was also missing and there was a lot of foul play in that situation. Some of these cases just get overlooked. They do. You say YouTube is a hotbed for misinformation. Choose uh, creators wisely. Whew. Uh, let's see, y'all. TikTok and tragedy pimps uh, fuck up another case with zero experience. I don't know, just us. That hasn't been confirmed by the family. At least I haven't seen anything. I want to be careful because let me tell you, tragedy happens immediately. You got the GoFundMe's. That should always be a red flag. Unless the family has publicly said we started a GoFundMe, I would be uh, very careful. Um, Rev says we need to remember that Riley fell off and hit his head hard against a concrete. Something is floating over here. Block and could have contributed to his confusion, ultimate demise, such a sad end to a young life. Uh, Reva, good point. Um, we really don't know. We won't be confused for long. Watch. I just don't know. No, I'm confused by your comment. I'm not confused by by uh, uh, what's going on. I'm confused. By your comment that you said earlier. There's cops and bulbs. They start the stories. Oh, Lord have mercy. Girl, you know you you mean serious business, but you got the exclamation points, girl. I mean, listen, I haven't even had my coffee yet, okay? Let's see. Um, you know, it says a lot about the the first of all. There's one thing I want to point out, and I think it's very important, and I've said it before, y'all. If it wasn't for the fact that we were looking for Riley, we wouldn't have found the two other bodies, correct? Were they called missing? I'll ask that again. Were they reported missing, the two other uh, bodies? We probably wouldn't have known anything, right? So it's interesting, I think, uh, to kind of put that out there, to say, like, that river. That Cumberland River, um, homeless encampments, you got to have to wonder, like, how many people go missing and they don't even know, like, what's up? You know, we don't we don't even know who's going missing and whatnot. There's so much pain involved in this question. Yeah, the questions are monstrous. But at the end, it's so painful. Riley met the end by ignorance of others, sad and true. Wow. I know. I know, Sherry. So we're calling the family. Where is Sherry? Like. Sherry, get some coffee, love. Um, I don't know. Some somebody help Sherry. Sherry, don't come over here with all that energy. I'm telling you, okay. I am not above putting you in your corner, okay. Let's do that. Family, uh, Riley's family called it a rumor, so we're calling a victim's family liars. Right? Easier, easier. Be kind. He was wearing the shirt. Be kind was right. Be kind was honest. Be kind wasn't very kind sometimes about it, but they called it out. Shout out to Be Kind. Because I saw the comments. I was like, ooh, Be Kind was a little snarky, okay? But Be Kind was being real. That's right. Let's not victimize the families. Let's have respect. They lost their son. That's right. So, yeah, don't come over here blaming the family, talking about a cover-up, y'all. Bring some receipts, unless you go to the other channels and, you know, you, the, you hit the link over there and you interview. Then you do that, right? You got to be very mindful of what you're doing. Now, at the same time, it's like people, anybody can hit a link, okay? So keep that in mind. Anybody can hit a link and give information. Um, sometimes when you're hitting the link, I've seen that happen in so many 
um, uh, channels. You said I wasn't snarky. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, I felt like you were a little bit, but you know what? You're right. You were in your right mind. You were right for, for saying that. Um, I personally think that, um, cause it guys, the guy said it was multiple witnesses. Okay. Banfield interviewed the homeless advocate. He didn't see anything directly. So it was like literally playing telephone, right? You're gathering information through five or six different sources. Correct. Am I correct? It was five or six different homeless people. And they gave all this information. What was the witness name? The one who said he saw the shirt. His name is Ross. Ross? Please, uh, yeah, please send it to me, love. Please and thank you. What was his name? His name was Ross, right? People were still looking for Ross. Banfield interviewed. I was looking at this interview that she did last night, too. So I'm not saying that, like, I'm sure that they saw something. Maybe, you know, there's this, what is it called? Tunnel vision to certain things and whatnot. I think I downloaded that video. Give me one sec. But you do have to kind of call that out. It does say a lot about what happens. We have to be very careful. We can't be reckless about things like that, y'all. We really can't be, okay? Um, we just got to be careful. They did. They did. They identified and found, uh, Riley, for those that are coming in, um, Tennessee's about to send me the link to the press conference I was looking for at night. I don't know. It's like, it's not the full link. It's only half of it, and I don't want to play half of the interview. Um, I'm going into my email, Tennessee, if you send it. Shout out to you, love. Um, the girl that was feeding the homeless said that she seen Ross wearing the shirt. Well, he was found with the shirt. Okay. He was found with the shirt, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tennessee. Okay, we have the full press conference over here. She says it starts at about 11 minutes. 11.33, okay, let me, we'll start it right here, okay? Shout out to everybody in the chat, and let's just see what happens, okay? Let me know your thoughts, all right? Podium as well, so by all accounts, this news conference is about to start. Let's listen in. I am in channel two. Okay, we'll uh, give everybody a chance to get set up, and Mike's in good shape, and Mike tested and everything. Again, if you're just joining us, that is Don Aaron and Chief Drake standing behind him from the Metro Nashville Police Department after discovering the body of Riley Strain in the Cumberland River. Okay, I'm going to uh, look to my, uh, on my left and around to the right. Everybody give me a thumbs up if you're ready. And we're just uh, getting in the process around. to get ready here for this news conference. They've just arrived on scene to give us the latest on this recovery. This morning, we have a uh, unfortunate update for you on the Riley Strange search. Chief John Drake, Metropolitan National Police Department, will be speaking with you. Chief Drake. Thank you, John. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this morning, around 7.28 a.m., we received a call uh, from a worker on about 61st Avenue uh, at a company that adjourns the uh, Cumberland River that had been searching for um, anything that would uh, pop up on the river, um, and especially looking for Raleigh Strait would uh, surface here. As they were removing uh, objects from the river, uh, they saw they noticed uh, what appeared to be Riley Strain um, pop up. Uh, the fire department uh, was called in, um, retrieved the body from the river. Uh, the medical examiner's office uh, reviewed the body and we confirmed uh, that it is uh, Riley Strain. Uh, the family uh, has been protected. Uh, now, there are no signs of foul play at this time according to the examination here at the uh, riverbank. Let me stop right here. Sharon, I know I have your comment up, sis. Sharon says, uh, I'm saying that she says she saw the particular shirt on Ross. So I'm asking, do you, did you think that was a lie? Um, I don't think that the, let me be very clear, y'all. 
I think that this is a, this so far has been such a highly covered case that it's very likely that they saw something similar to what Riley might have been wearing and somehow that shirt stuck out to them. That's what I'm saying. I don't particularly think that the lady was lying. I do think that we need to be very careful. Um, uh, you know, there were several witnesses because it wasn't just on social media. They also went and reported this to the family, right? So keep that in mind. I do think that when you have such a bigger platform like News Nation, like all these other platforms, right? If you have a bigger platform, your level of vetting information, if you have the resources to do it, please do it, right? Because like someone like myself, who's, a, you know, it's just me. I'm the only one that can vet the information. Uh, I, I, I can't hire folks to do it. But I do think that there was this push to um, put out the other witnesses statements. And who's to say that some of these witnesses didn't see something? But how do you even confirm some of that? Because they couldn't confirm it before. And some of the stuff didn't come out of law enforcement. So keep that in mind. I think that our minds play trick on play play tricks on us. They do. Uh, we see things that aren't necessarily always there. So we put that on social media on bigger platforms. It's dangerous. But at the same time, there's some vital information that could come out of this. We just don't know. That's all I'm saying. Uh, not to call anybody liars. It's just that I feel like it's just misinformation at this point. Maybe she didn't. She, I think her name is Sabrina, um, as well as the other witnesses, didn't really know what was up. Okay. Or maybe something played in her mind. Or maybe Ross existed and maybe he had a white black shirt that looked the same. I don't know. Uh, Mr. Strain still had the shirt on that he was wearing, uh, so had the watch and other identifying factors that helped us identify who he is. I want to say uh, to the family, uh, my heart and prayers go out to you all uh, for this very unfortunate and tragic uh, incident. I also want to say thank you to the national community and the outpouring community of the outpouring support from the community uh, in trying to help us locate uh, Mr. Strain. I also want to say thank you to our USAR team and, and to the fire department and OEM and TWRA and everyone else, including the media, for everything that you've done, for the countless tips that came in. Uh, we received nearly 200 tips as of yesterday that we were vetting out. Um, so at this time, the family's been notified uh, there would be an autopsy uh, more than likely sometime today, and uh, and we'll have a little bit further uh, from that point. So, thank you. Chief, can you tell us, is there any other additional evidence that, that points you to the theory that it seems like you've been going after for a while now? It's just that he fell into the river, you know, accidentally? Yeah, there's no other evidence that suggests anything other than uh, we have reports that uh, normally, uh, under these circumstances, with, with his height and weight, that he could have surfaced between 14 and 20 days. Uh, this is the 14th day, uh, so we were uh, really expecting uh, anytime soon to uh, to find him. In fact, our search teams was going to put in in the water here uh, this morning and did search from this point further down. Uh, so. Uh, we were in the right spot, it's just unfortunate. But there's nothing to suggest anything other than any foul play at all. You said that these were crews that were actually looking for him that found him? Yes, that's, uh, so the workers typically on the river, whether it's barge companies, concrete companies, other businesses that actually are on the river, and they, uh, they look routinely. It's happened countless times before. And if they moved, I believe, a barge, and don't quote me on that, they removed something from the river, and as they moved it, they noticed uh, Mr. Strain so, and, ca and called it in. Typically work on the water. They weren't necessarily search groups. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you all. Thank you. From Chief Drake on the scene there at Ed Teppa Boulevard where the body of Riley Strain, the college student who has been missing for two weeks now, was discovered this morning. And it sounds like the biggest takeaway is that they believe at this point he likely fell into the water. That's the operational theory at this point after pulling the body and not finding any signs of foul play.
And workers around that area, near that area of the river, uh, routinely, what Chief Drake said, they typically uh, look for things like this, and they happened to find Riley just hours ago, around 7.30 this morning. And what I found very interesting, Amanda, was they said that given his height and weight, typically this would have been the first day that they would have located someone of his stature. They had been anticipating that if he indeed fell into the water, this would have been the day or in the coming next days that they would have found him based on those factors. In fact, they were so confident in that they had already planned to have boats in the water today doing a search in that particular area. So they were aware that this was an important day and they were planning their search efforts all around that. Um, they said that they have contacted the family, which, gosh, you think about what an emotional phone call that had to have been. This is a family that has been here since day one of his disappearance. Um, they're from out of town. They're not from here. They have no real support system. And they have been desperate to find their son. And they have said all along, we're not leaving without him. Exactly right. And Chief Drake also made note of the out of love that they have been receiving from not just the Nashville community, but volunteers coming just wow. nationwide to help try and find this young man and bring that closure to his family. So let's talk a little bit about that discovery. They say, you know, a lot of business is there on the river. It's part of their routine to check the riverbanks and clear the riverbanks of debris. Um, and in this particular case, they may have moved a barge and that's when they made the discovery of Riley Strain's body. Police say that he was still wearing the shirt that he was last seen in, he was still wearing the watch and that there were other identifying factors that allowed them to confirm that this indeed was the body of Riley Strain. What comes next? So an autopsy is the oh. next piece of this. And authorities are saying that they believe. And let me just say, I just pulled the video because I had downloaded the video last night <clears throat> to watch it today with you guys. Unless we had like other updates on this witness. And like I said, I think that this is a definitely if you're, you know, a, if you're watching YouTube videos, this is a cautionary tale of like what to do when you get tunnel vision especially in these true crime cases you know being mindful like vic says um you know if you're pushing this shirt theory and harping on police like sometimes you gotta take a seat back now mind you i'm not saying that police don't you know they they, they get it uh they don't always get it right okay let's just say that but sometimes they do and we have to be able to be supportive of when they get it right right? I believe that will happen at some point today. Um, and then the TABC, of course, is going to continue its investigation. Their mm. big question is, was he overserved at any of these bars downtown that he may have visited? That's the question they're trying to answer. Right. And I think we have a Brendan Tierney now on the scene there. Uh, Brendan, uh, can you tell us what more you've learned from this press conference? Yeah, my big takeaway from this press conference is how Metro Police say that Riley's body was discovered. They say it was people who are barge operators. They're working out on the river here every day, and they were doing routine checks. Earlier in the week, Metro Police had told us that they were asking everyone who's working on the river, if you're just out fishing or something like that, to start checking every day for any sign of Riley. And in the end, that is exactly how they ended up finding his body out here today. Metro Police officers say that they were called as soon as they got that discovery and they came out on scene and were able to recover the body of Riley. Of course, Metro Police said that no foul play was suspected in this case. They found Riley still wearing his shirt that wow. so many people were searching for. It was such a distinct shirt. And that's one of the ways they were able to identify him so quickly. His family has been. So they found his shirt, very distinct shirt, right? Okay. And the Apple Watch. Nobody was wearing the shirt, you guys. Riley had his shirt on the whole time. And identified, and of course, they just, as Chief Drake had mentioned, are just so heartbroken. As so many other people in the community will be by this discovery. It's definitely a worst case scenario out of this two week long search for Riley, but hopefully it's at least able to bring some closure for the family after what's been such a heartbreaking time period. Every time we've had a chance to talk with them, they've been getting emotional and struggling to 
process everything. Metro police out here continuing to exit the scene. Just a few police cars remain on scene out here as the medical examiner had already left. And we've seen um, now two trailers with boats leave the area here along Ed Temple Boulevard right by TSU's campus. Wow. I think so many people have been in so invested in this story. Um, yeah. And, and hoping and praying that there would be a different outcome. Uh, Mayor Freddie O'Connell just now tweeting about the discovery. He says, of course, this is not the outcome that anyone had hoped for or wanted, especially his parents and everyone who loved him. Such an immense amount of sadness following this discovery. Mm -hmm. He was saying that, you know, he met with his family earlier this week. And as devastating as this news is, I can't even imagine the heartbreak. So they're going to continue to work with that family, he goes on to say, as they're looking for even more answers with that autopsy that uh, the chief of police, John Drake, said that they will be conducting today. And I think the big question is going forward, how did this happen? Mm -hmm. And what could potentially we glean from that TABC investigation into the various establishments that he may have visited the night that he disappeared? Um, you know, we saw this kind of almost heartbreaking video of him yes. stumbling through downtown. That night. Yeah, it was. And my, my biggest question is, because you guys saw that video of when he hit his head, did that contribute to maybe like confusion, a concussion, in addition to the um, drinking, right? We don't know exactly what had happened there. So kind of keep that in mind. And, and you're absolutely right, Vic, it's, it's confirmation bias. Um, Y'all remember, like I said, when we went live last, not yesterday, well, it was yesterday too, but in the other live, I had asked you, can you guys count how many witnesses we have so far? Because there were so many witnesses coming out. Then I was watching Banfield when she interviewed the uh, homeless advocate, right? And even the homeless advocate said that they had interviewed about four or five different people, four or five different people. And I'm just sitting there like, that's, and they all talked about the shirt. So confirmation bias, tunnel vision all there were four or five people saying the same thing or were four or five different people watching the same news source and thought they saw somebody or maybe they did see him uh but didn't necessarily you know they just thought well somebody else took the shirt shirt looks similar to somebody else that can happen too so yeah um it's a lot to be said about that and we'll definitely be watching i have the other video up of where we were supposed to review it today okay um and it just aligns itself with more confirmation bias, in my opinion. It was really hard to watch. And she and did to see somebody in that state and alone. Um, but then I think what was odd it was to see how OK he appeared in that interaction with the Metro police officer right before he disappeared. Right, right. That was one of those final videos of the looks that we got um, before obviously finding out the news that we did uh, just about 30 minutes ago. Again, Riley Strain, that missing college student from Missouri now found in the Cumberland River just around 730 this morning. Police say no foul play. They believe he simply fell into the river, but an autopsy is underway today. Wow. Well, we're going to keep you updated on this breaking news story throughout the day, starting at 11 o'clock on the air and all the time in the WSMB4 News app. Yes, and you're absolutely right. Let me, um, Miss Tennessee, Banfield called him out saying that's impossible. Yeah, I remember that interview she did with him and she said you know based on the timeline she did say to the advocate well that's impossible based on what's been outlined now there was another video that was released after that last night that i wanted to watch with everybody here uh, but before we go there let me shout out miss amber says riley's story isn't in vain it's sending a loud reminder to our youth that it's okay to have fun always remain capable to take care of yourself go with friends come together and leave together and thank you miss amber for gifting five memberships okay thank you thank you miss amber that is so well said you know what i'm saying like we have to be very mindful and careful y'all especially with your children if you have children around that age just have them travel you know in pairs you know that kind of thing you don't leave if i don't leave if something looks weird with a drink accidentally drop it you know do one of those like you know whatever whatever to to you know minimize any of the uh spiking of the drinks and stuff like that you do have to be careful we do i don't know the area very well anybody can become a victim of something so we definitely have to be careful uh marco thank you for becoming uh renewing your membership shout out to you and again thank you for the 199 uh rest in peace riley comfort to his family shout out to you guys thank you guys for being here
as well. Okay, now Riley will be going home. Let's be thankful and grateful to the many, many people who on their own time search for this young man. I, I, I agree with you. Let's keep the family in our prayers. And don't blame the homeless without facts. Don't run the rumors that haven't been confirmed by law enforcement. Don't automatically assume the friends did it. Don't assume law enforcement uh, isn't doing anything about it. You know, you're right. And I definitely um, am guilty of that. I personally felt like there was something about the friends that didn't quite make sense. Um, and maybe it was because the friends kind of left him there. Uh, nobody called anybody uh, for that. Like, you know, like there was no cab or anything like that to pick up this young man that was drinking. There was a friend that followed him out, but then the friend went elsewhere. He didn't exit the building. Yeah, um, I definitely side-eyed the friends. And I think part of it is of my own bias of like, and we all do it. I would have done this. If that were me, I would have done this. If that were me, I would have done this. But this case, as well as, like the Rod Kylie Rodney case, as well as many others that we have covered, um, should teach us a lesson, right? We should be careful about how we say things, how we do things, what we put out there, definitely. Um, I want to definitely play this because I think it leads into that kind of confirmation bias that we could definitely learn a lesson from, okay? And let me know your thoughts. So this one was released last night, I believe. In the person who first saw someone other than Riley wearing what looked like Riley's shirt. Sabrina Martin is a volunteer with Souls United, an organization that helps the homeless in Nashville. And she joins me live now on the phone. Sabrina, thank you so much for coming back on the program. You know, we're at day 13 and 11 days ago, you spotted the homeless person. Um, we think maybe his name is Ross wearing the shirt that looks like Riley's. We've had Chris Salisbury say that he now knows someone named Ross, a homeless man, hmm. uh, was telling others that he got that shirt. He saw it hanging on a railing. It had vomit on it and he picked it up cleaned off the vomit and uh, started wearing it. You tried mightily to get a hold of the police. You called them, you were thrown into voicemail for the cold case unit, you then called uh, Crime Stoppers. And as of, I think yesterday when we talked to you, they hadn't called you back. Have they called you back yet? They have, they called me yesterday afternoon. Well, that is a real relief. Can you describe your conversation with them? Um, yes, it was Detective Rowland who gave me a call. He wanted, he first apologized for it taking him so long to get back to me. Um, and then he just asked me to recount what I've seen. Um, and then a description of, of the gentleman, what the gentleman was wearing in his back. Also gave him the location. And then I gave him uh, the contact information of two other volunteers that were with me that day. Um, I confirmed with them last night that Metro Police did follow up with both of them as well. And they were able to tell the story that they saw that homeless man wearing what looked like Riley's shirt as well, correct? Yes, ma'am. So what about this man named Ross? I, when you, you and I first spoke, you told me that you had seen him before. It wasn't the first time that you had... Um, had an interaction with them because you are often once a month, you know, serving the homeless. Have you seen him since? Has anyone else seen him since? Um, to my knowledge, no one has seen him since. I haven't seen him since, um, but I have not been back to the homeless camp uh, since that Sunday. What's interesting about um, Chris Salisbury, who also made a report to us that he tried to get a hold of the police and was thrown into the cold case voicemail. Uh, is that he also works with the homeless and he went down there to speak with several people. Wow. That he had reports from at least three or four, maybe even five other people who said the same thing. Um, a homeless man who goes by the name of Ross told them that he got that shirt, found it hanging on a railing, but he said that it was hanging on a railing sort of down near Broadway, which would be way, way south of where our red line, you know, puts, uh, you know, puts Riley. So what do you guys think? Okay, now these are the witnesses and everything that had come out. Some of this is like second or third had information. Um, how do you guys think this plays a part? And I think that this is important. It goes back to that confirmation bias. Keep in mind that Riley was found, for those that are coming in, he was found with the shirt on. Okay, he was found with the shirt on absolutely nebulous you're right no one is to blame no one wanted this outcome it wasn't foul play it's something that we can learn from to avoid it ever happening again i definitely agree with your 
comment. My opinion is believe half of what you see and none of what you hear. Ooh, Kim, that's definitely a great comment, right? Hippie says, this is such a heartbreaking story. Pray for his family able to find peace at some point. Right. Um, Erica says, I truthfully don't think the media slash suits um, interfere that much on this case. They found him on the first day. They expected his body to surface. You mean like law enforcement? People investigation investigating keeps the search alive. Who um, didn't the police officer this morning say that that identified the body by clothing and his watch, but the homeless man had his shirt on, uh, sucking on Jolly Ranchers of Chaos. Great name, by the way. Um, that is, you're absolutely correct. Um, which we were just talking about that. We were talking about the fact that we had so many witnesses say different things that had been interviewed on bigger platforms about this. So it was kind of one of those things where it's like, well, damn, like, it's weird because it's, you know, part of my mind says five or six different people saying the same thing can't be wrong, right? Well, they were. He was found with the shirt, you know? Maybe he did throw up. That could have very well happened. That could have been the case. But, yeah, like, it's just, it's interesting where we're at now. What's interesting is when Chris gathered that information about the shirt having vomit on it. You can tell me why that's significant, though, right? The timing of when Chris Salisbury got the reports from the homeless people up near those bridges that Ross had said he got the shirt with vomit on it. Why was it significant, that timing? Um, to me, it was significant because uh, the public, it didn't come out publicly um, that there was puke, you know, on the shirt until I believe yesterday or the day before. Chris was actually down um, at the homeless camp getting the reports last week. So Thursday, Friday of last week. It gives it even more credibility. It wasn't public. Uh, we hadn't had the report yet from the family that they had witnessed Riley vomiting over the barrier. Um, but those homeless people had been talking about the shirt with vomit on it before that. Thank you for that, um, Sabrina. I appreciate it. Can I ask you one more quick question? And that is this area at 10 o'clock at night. Is this an area you would go alone at 10 o'clock at night where Riley was last uh, pinging and seen on the video? Um, I, I personally wouldn't go alone downtown at all. Um, I would definitely be in pairs or in a group, uh, but I would not go in that area alone at night. Not particularly safe. Not to say that everybody in that area is dangerous, but there are uh, definitely some some uh, trouble spots. Sabrina Martin, I can't thank you enough. So when, um, I think what is really sad is when we see that footage of with the officer and the officer is greeting him and he's greeting him back and everything, you know, it's just really sad to see all that kind of, and then knowing that that is truly, there's more footage of him. Yeah, I think it was beyond the bridge. And then we don't see any more footage of him. He just kind of disappears, right? Those were like, when were his last moments? That's really the question, in my opinion, I'd like to understand. Thank you, Infamous. Crazy, this Ross guy name is everywhere now. Um, Involving the shirt that's still on Riley, right, Heather? And look, at y'all are like reacting. Um, Exactly. It's human nature to blame someone of something under such circumstances it's understandable but we must find a way to learn from it or be damned to repeat it you know nebulous i feel like in cases like this um we're always damned to repeat certain things I i'm thinking of kylie rodney now some of y'all have different theories of kylie rodney for me it, it was it was what it was and there have been channels and whatnot that have started off of running conspiracy theories out of this young girl's death accidental death um yeah I, I i i feel like we're doomed to repeat it on social media every time just us says uh the only solid evidence was that the family uh that spoke to him ashley lost so much credibility so much cred always pushing own agenda cops new stats on river drowning location is surfacing she ignored it well you know the thing is too it's like you have to like you have to understand. I think that if you're there, then you have a different perception. Like I think of SF Investigates. SF Investigates was right about this. SF Investigates called it last night too. He said he's like, listen, 
the the shirt is a rumor it has a big confirm like y'all need to stop that did we not read his post his very lengthy post last night and then here we are today it, i think it's a little bit different when you're there and when you're actually measuring waters and stuff like that and then you're just kind of sitting there like yeah you know it's it's a little bit different it's a little bit different um to all those saying who to all those saying the frat brothers lawyered up was a sign of foul play you're ignorant it's the smartest thing you can do to stop them from being your target of wild theories and false accusations um you know just us uh and i just said this earlier i side-eyed the frat brothers i'm not gonna lie now i never said that they can't lawyer up y'all can lawyer up as much as you want to i probably would have done the same too so I understand what you're saying. Um, just because your lawyer up does is not a sign of foul play. I mean, they've said that before. Like, think about the Scott Peterson case. Lawyered up immediately. I mean, but th that had a different outcome. Please note that. So you're right. You're right. You're right. Um, keep that in mind. Everybody should lawyer up if you if you have the resources to do it. Unfortunately, youth are the mindset that it's not going to happen to them. Unfortunately, it happens to someone close to them. It's a hard lesson to learn. I want to know, you know, Kim, and I kind of wonder if there if any kind of head injury played a part like when he hit himself, they're not suspecting foul play. We that will come in due time for those that are the toxicology lamb. Will come in due time. I believe they're still kind of working on that. Um you know, because, you know, they're going to do an autopsy on the body. A lot of us um, in the beginning, I personally checked myself through the family basically said back off. Yeah, I would agree. The family was like everybody um, is concerned. Hey, SW, all other missing kids. Well, we definitely got to focus on that, too. There are a lot of missing children. The head injury is definitely plausible. So for those that are just now coming in um, and I'm just kind of giving you all the heads up and letting you know they had the press conference this morning. A body was identified and it's been identified as Riley. He was identified through his uh, attire. So he was wearing the shirt. Um, a lot of us were having this conversation about like, well, that means that the people that went onto the shows and talked about. They saw a shirt, they saw a shirt, you know, it was a lot of confirmation bias, a lot of tunnel vision. Um, you know, there was a lot of witnesses and a lot of the witnesses were wrong. Right. And and that's OK. That can happen. Uh, but it also does bring the question of how much does that take away from the investigation? How much does that take away from like people putting their energy where they need to go? Um, there are times where witnesses get it correct. Right. One of the things that really stood out to me about this case was when the TikTokers found the card, the uh, debit card. There was a lot that came about that. Um, and so it's just one of those things where it's like we have to kind of understand. I also feel like when people go missing around bodies of water, it says a lot about, you know, at least for me, my lack of knowledge in how a current goes or like levels and feet, what that does to everybody. But um it's interesting how some of the five or six five or six witnesses that spoke out, a lot of it came out of nothing. It's really, really sad. Um, I don't know. Yes, head injury is very much possible. We don't know um, if that had an impact on him, on his judgment. Of course, that's just something to understand. Tennessee says you haven't heard a single name of you haven't heard a single one of their names. They won't be connected to this media wise 10 years from now. I hope so. I hope not, Treasure. I definitely hope not. Um, you said, Kathy says, when I took a criminal a criminal justice class, one of my constitutional law professors said guilty or innocent, always get an attorney. Always. It don't matter whether you're guilty or innocent. You're so right. You're so right. Um, I went several of my criminology classes. I had uh, former detectives that would teach the class. Right. And one of them always said, I remember watching this interview, real life case of, um, of, a of a murder. And it was so easy. We had to write a paper on it about what we thought. And we had to break down the case a little bit. It was so easy to get tunnel vision. I don't know how these law enforcement officers, um, are able to really decipher and go through some of these cases without getting some tunnel vision. I don't know. 
I don't know. Through police say that Riley's body was found about eight miles from downtown, and there is no foul play suspected as they are still out here on scene. I want to give you a bit of a closer look at what exactly we are seeing out here right now as Metro Police on scene still have a couple of vehicles out here at the gate. There was a time earlier they had four or five vehicles blocking the gate out here. The heavier police presence is back towards the water where there are still a number of Metro Police vehicles. You've seen the crime scene unit. We've seen unmarked cars all coming out here today, this morning. Metro Police on scene throughout the past couple of um, hour, 45 minutes or so, have shifted their focus from where they were a little bit downriver out here. It appears that there wasn't access to the boat uh, to get on the water down there where the body was actually found before Metro Police came out here. We are awaiting a briefing from Metro Police. We're told it will happen out here on the scene to get more information about exactly how this body was found. Metro Police, exactly how they were able to identify it as Riley Strain today. Of course, Amanda marks 14 days since the 22-year-old University of Missouri student went missing after being kicked out of a Broadway bar. So much of that focus had centered in downtown Nashville, where Riley went, was last seen, went missing. And of course, over the past couple of days, they shifted all the way down river to um, the Cheatham County Dam, Cheatham County line, searching the river there. That's where I was yesterday. So we're going to continue focusing on exactly what's happening out here throughout the day as it does wow. appear Metro police are clearing the scene somewhat out here. We were awaiting an official briefing from officers. All right, if you can stand by for us, Brendan, because we have a few more questions for you, but we want to give folks some perspective if we can. Originally this morning, crews and a flurry of crews responded to 61st Avenue North in the nation's area of Nashville. This is uh, video from that scene, and this is where they first responded after getting reports of a body in the water. This is where they say that they realized that a body was trapped underneath a barge. And then a few minutes later, everybody left this particular area and went about three miles away to where we just saw Brendan onto Ed Temple Boulevard, which is right by TSU. And that's where they said, okay, you know what? This is where we're going to be able to get into the water. It was too steep at the other location. Let's try this other area. And we're able to see that they were able to make it right into the water there to perform that recovery effort. And it did not take long for them to confirm that the body that they found in the river does indeed belong to Riley Strain. It is important to note, they say there does not appear to be any obvious signs of trauma from foul play, but that an autopsy is going to happen so that they can better determine what happened here. We knew that this... Um, this location where they were searching is not far, of course, from where wow. the focus of the search for Riley Strain has been unfolding for two weeks now today. Brendan Tierney, let's talk a little bit more about exactly what you've been seeing from that scene. Um, it, it really didn't take much time from the time authorities got to the second location for us to see that medical examiner truck leaving the scene and other officers following and leaving. Yeah, Amanda, when we saw that medical examiner transport truck come by, it drove right past me. It had a metro a uh, metro government vehicle in front of that, followed by a metro police car. Of course, they were escorting that medical transport vehicle away from the scene here. And a short time later, there was another just flood of police cars coming out from the gate behind us, followed by a trailer. It had two boats on it that were down at the water. They made their way out of the scene here as well uh, just a short time ago. And we know that in about two minutes here, Metro Police are prepared to begin walking us through this investigation and their response to both of these different scenes. So we anticipate that Don Aaron here in a moment or another member of the Metro Police Department will be sharing updates on how the report came in, how the discovery was made um, and what's coming next. Of course, we know the autopsy is going to be the very next thing, but the initial indication is no signs of foul play um, or no observations of trauma related to foul play. Yeah, we got these notifications probably about two hours mm -hmm. ago now and we've had a crew out there on those scenes following this very, uh, very closely. It's been two weeks since Riley Strain uh, went missing in downtown Nashville and really a timeline that we've seen those progressive videos that have been released over the past few days of just showing uh, a, a bit of a glimpse of what has uh, led up to what we found out. So 945 right about now, any minute now, we're expecting Metro Nashville police to give us an update on what's happening now and what happens next. It doesn't sound like their investigation includes anything regarding foul play, but of course they're waiting on an autopsy to confirm all of that information. Down this is interesting. So at the time of this, they said no foul play, but I guess they're going to the autopsy. If there is something to kind of look into, they're going to look into that as well. Let me see. The parents at least have closure. It's still very sad. Right, Nero? I would agree with you on that. Let me see what y'all are saying. Water will uh, affect outcome. They should get some stomach contents. 
Ooh, um, shouldn't the city guard slash railing face and oh, I mean, they should be. Yeah, that's a great request. You know, it's a little unsafe if people are out there drinking. Definitely, um, there should be some more railing and guarding of that area. The way strangers feel so entitled when any case occurs, I don't blame anyone for getting a lawyer. Oh, this is a, this is a great comment. People are so quick to go on to the attack without all the facts and evidence. That's true. I mean, we've determined guilt and innocence. It's almost like we're having multiple trials. You have one on social media and then you have one in a courtroom. But the one on social media can follow you for the rest of your life, right? Like, if you think about it, 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 just, it is. Um, you said uh, since their kids were on a fraternity function, the national fraternity may have hired the lawyer, an attorney and asked them not to speak to the media, right? Uh, something to that effect. Very well could be the case. Well, thank you, Just Us. Thank you, thank you. I, you know, like I said, I mean, it's very sad news, um, but I am like, this is something of a learning lesson, I think, for all of us, just to be very careful about how we're disseminating some of this information, you know, and if you have a witness, like I could see that, right? Uh, folks hitting links or, you know, going on like bigger, bigger channels, shout out to, you know, it's it's not a dig. We just got to be careful. That's all. Um, neuropsych, right. It's like sad and true. I mean, think about it. Social media cuts deep. It really does cut deep um, media in general, but social media seems to be a little bit different. It's the thing that really follows you forever. Like if you don't want to be famous, you gonna be famous. Infamous or famous, pick one, but you'll be it. Social media is a little bit different. Um, yes, let me see what you guys are saying. You said TikTok is the devil. <laughs> well, I thought they were shutting down TikTok. Aren't we there yet? Like, I thought that that was the thing. Weren't they shutting down TikTok? I mean, I could be wrong, but I thought that something had happened there and TikTok is done and they're no longer using TikTok. Uh, am I wrong about that? Am I wrong about that? Let me know, y'all. Let me know in the chat. Um, let's sit over here. We still have a lot of people in that area. The latest. Hold up. Missouri student Riley Strain. It continues today, and there's more information coming to light since the weekend. Riley Strain's bank card being found yesterday, and today police releasing new video of Riley as well interacting with a police officer. We want to bring in Fox 17 Nashville reporter Kelly Avellino. She joins us live with more on that information. Wow. Kelly, what more do we know about that video, and is it helping police at all? Well, that video was taken in the last known spot that Riley Dingman, uh, excuse me, that Riley Strain was seen. So it doesn't really move the ball down the field as much as the family would hope. I spoke to Chris Dingman today, who is a family friend. Now, he tells me the family is very grateful for all of the effort that police have been putting in. They're certainly grateful uh, that TikTokers found Riley's debit card yesterday behind me over by the riverbank. I can tell you, though, there are some questions at this, po at this point. The family is rather perplexed. That is not the latest. Hold up, y'all. That is that is three. Why did it say the latest? Sorry, y'all. I misread that because they posted that like nine minutes ago. That is not the latest. Okay, let's stop. Let's stop with that. Let's stop with that. Uh, that's my fault. Sorry, y'all. Okay, we have on location more this here. This morning we have a uh, unfortunate update for you on the Riley Strange search. Chief John Drake. Metropolitan Nashville Police Department will be speaking with you. Chief Drake. Thank you, Don, and uh, good morning, everyone. We've seen this uh, already, guys. This so morning at 7.28 a.m., we received a call uh, from a worker on uh, 61st Avenue uh, at a company that adjoins the uh, Cumberland River that had been searching for uh, anything that would uh, pop up on the river, um, especially looking for Riley Strain, if he would uh, surface here. As they were removing um, an object from the river, uh, they saw, they noticed uh, what appeared to be Riley Strain um, pop up. Uh, the fire department uh, was called in, uh, retrieved the body from the river. Uh, the medical examiner's office uh, reviewed the body and we confirmed 
uh, than it is uh, Riley Strain. Uh, the- I really wish the the uh, that he would have gotten a little bit closer to the mic because there's some areas that's very hard to kind of make out what he's saying. For sure, for those that are just not watching this, okay. Family uh, has been contacted. Uh, there, if there are no signs of foul play at this time, according to the examination here at the uh, riverbank. Uh, Mr. Strain still had the shirt on that he was wearing, uh, so had to watch. And other identifying factors that helped us identify who he is. I want to say uh, to the family, uh, my heart and prayers go out to you all uh, for this very unfortunate and tragic uh, incident. I also want to say thank you to the Nashville community and the Outpouring community of the Outpouring support from the community uh, in trying to help us locate uh, Mr. Strain. I want to stop right here. Let me show you guys a map that was posted on Twitter. Okay, hold up. Let me see if I can make myself a little bit smaller, smaller. From, thank you, Infamous. Shout out to you. Look, from where the X is at, um, all the way to, I don't know if that means, like from this starting point, that this is where the body, they feel like the body might, that Riley might have fallen in that area, and the current took them. So they weren't too off of their searching, if I'm understanding this map correctly now please know that the person posted it prior to the identification they said this map for example for example only at current we have no idea who the body in the cumberland is we didn't this was about an hour ago the x in the right is riley's last known location the x to the left is the location of the body recovered so to the right this is where his last known location was at and to the left is where his body was recovered. All right. So people weren't too, as far as law enforcement and the search in this area, they weren't too far off, you guys. They really weren't too far off, which, um, you know, it, it's interesting to kind of see where we're at right now. Um, Court TV's also posted information as well. They're covering it. I mean, there's a lot of people talking about this. Um, but then again, I just wanted to make sure that we understood and we they're not they're not suspecting foul play. I believe um the body has been taken uh by the forensic examiner's van. So they they they're already traveling, they're en route. Um, and you know, to rule out any possibility of foul play. Just so everybody's aware um, that, like I said, this is definitely a cautionary tale for everybody. We got to be careful. Uh, people out there drinking and everything, got to be careful. The partying, it's, this is like spring break month. We all have to be very careful. Absolutely. And we still have the young man out of Corpus Christi, Texas, Caleb Harris, who is still missing. Um, a very interesting case as well. Hopefully, we will move our attention out there as well um definitely again you guys keep this family in your prayers we don't know what else uh another thing that we could learn from this case for sure is being careful with the information that is you know disseminated not everything is a conspiracy not everything um yeah Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I want to thank everybody for being here. Shout out to you guys in the chat. Thank you so much for your patience as we're kind of going through this information. Let me know your thoughts um, about, you know, theories. Let me know kind of where you guys fell into this. I was honest and told y'all, you know, I thought it was something to do with the frat brothers. You know, definitely got to be careful how I say things uh, and what information I give out there about that. Because I was, I mean, I posted, I was very suspicious about that. Um, But, you know, yes. Keep that family in your prayers um, because they're going to need a lot of support, okay? And I haven't heard of any GoFundMe yet. Please be careful with that. Please note that um, that is such a thing that happens now on social media. Uh, People will start GoFundMes for people, and they're all typically scamish. Make sure you guys hear it directly from the family source, okay? Thank you, guys. I will see you guys on the next one. Rabbits out. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Bye, guys. You guys have a great day. Bye.